Now, Pavarotti was a good friend. Hello. Welcome to The Revealing. I'm your host, Pavarotti, here to discuss the Idaho 4 case. As a disclaimer, this channel is for entertainment purposes. These are my opinions. I'm not here to slander anyone. And I'm going to speculate tremendously in this one. And as you, if you have been watching my last few videos, and if you haven't watched them, I recommend go watch the last two or three before you watch this one, or else this one won't make any sense to you. So if you haven't, stop it now, go watch them, and then come back. Because in this one, I'm going to do some massive speculating. And I've been painting the picture up until this point of the possible involvement of the roommates in the atrocity. And when I say roommates, I'm really saying roommate. The, the thing is, when we start to really break this thing down and look at all of the evidence that we have in this case, and we have a lot, we have a lot. This has been going on for a long time. There's been a lot put out there. We've got to keep our mind open, but we also have a theory. And that theory is backed up by a lot at this point. So now it's just figuring out the fine pieces. It's, it's, Connecting those dots that a lot of people out there didn't think we would ever connect. Well, sometimes dots connect themselves when you start looking at it in the right way. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to dive really, really deep and start, start speculating a little bit on how this thing took place. Who did it? Who did it? And how can we figure that out? How, how can you figure that out just from sitting on a computer? Is it possible? Is it probable? Probably not probable, but is it possible? Well, I think it is. Because I think there's a lot of information out there. This internet thing is, is kind of amazing what you can find when you really, really dig and you really, really keep your eyes and ears open. So... What I'd like to start with, though, is a short video that was made right after the atrocity happened by a very good, I don't even call him a content creator, because, I mean, he gets out there and he gets his hands dirty, and that's Jonathan Lee Richards, and I like this guy, because he really goes out and he dives in. Anybody that doesn't like him, I don't know why, because he's boots on the ground, and let's see what he had to say about this thing right after it happened. Riches investigates. I am covering the tragedy in Moscow, Idaho. Four college students brutally stabbed in the early morning hours of November 13, 2022. Inside at home and police have made no arrests and haven't publicly identified a suspect. So who did it? Who did it? I wanna talk about Dylan Mortensen, one of the surviving roommates and her boyfriend. Her boyfriend is named Quinn Kelly. I made a video about them earlier. Go check that video out. I analyze Quinn Kelly, Dylan's boyfriend, and posts his Facebook page, so it's worth watching. Go check it out. But I wanna talk a little bit about Quinn Kelly's father. Quinn Kelly's father. His name is Jeremy Kelly. So you have Dylan Mortensen, who was one of the surviving roommates that lived downstairs with another roommate, Bethany. And upstairs, second floor, third floor, four people died. Four people got stabbed. Dylan was allegedly asleep. And the call to report what happened the murders happened eight hours after it happened, around noon, a little bit before noon on the 13th. So there is many people out there questioning Dylan. Where was Dylan at the time? Why did it take her to you know, report it so late? Who was she with? Was anyone with her? Was her boyfriend with her? And that's why I made a video about the boyfriend. 
considering that authority said someone on Dylan's end, it's believed, made the call to 911. Surviving people that were there, someone within that group made a call to 911. Was Dylan's boyfriend Quinn around? But let's talk about Quinn's father, Jeremy. And I've done, done, done a little bit of digging about Jeremy. And, you know, I found some disturbing things. I found some disturbing things I want to share with you guys about Quinn's father, Jeremy. This is him. Jeremy Kelly. Jeremy Lee Kelly. But Jeremy's had multiple arrests around the state of Idaho numerous times throughout the years. Here are some of his pictures. So what do we really know about this youngster right here? We know that he conveniently has a I think a Snapchat post of himself in Boise, Idaho at the time of the atrocity, even though there's been many reports that he was seen in Moscow that next morning, if not the previous day. So a Snapchat photo in Boise would be something that um, somebody smart would do. And it's, Curiously, right around the time of the atrocity, that'd be somebody somebody smart would do to give them a, an airtight alibi, wouldn't it? And what do we really know about this gentleman, who is that youngster's father, who has been in and out of prison many, many times and would be a very likely candidate to be a member of the Idaho Aryan Knights. Very possible. So just thinking out loud, if we have our folks here who have been set up, they're going to report it to their local superiors. This is how these types of organizations work. And that would be that would be the group that's operating all of the trafficking from Spokane into Moscow and Pullman. That would be your Aryan Knights. And they would receive orders from the main office, if you will over in Seattle, and that is that Aryan family that was taken down by the feds in March of 2023. So if they were to place the order for the hit, they would bring in, and I've said this before, people from out of state to do the hit. They wouldn't use local guys. Now, right here, we've got three of those members of the 28 people that were taken down in March in that drug trafficking organization in that Aryan prison gang. And you can see these three members, oddly, were all from Arizona. And they were taken down in Mason County, Washington on December the 9th. What was odd about that one is in their possession was a white BMW X6 and a 2020 white GMC Sierra. So if folks, just thinking out loud, folks like this were brought in to commit the atrocity, they would still need somebody local that could complete the task. And if the dealers of these folks were aware that something was going to go down because they were providing some intel 
on the people in the house, it would be likely if they knew this gentleman to warn him that something was going down because their friend, this young lady, lived there. And they may not want her to be harmed. So by contacting him to let them know what was being discussed, he could then contact his close relative, very close relative, who is a member. That close relative could not only get an exception made, but he would provide... the person to go in with the out-of-state guys to make sure that everything went correct because he would have inside knowledge and an inside person in the house. Now, I know that's a lot to chew on. Okay, so we're just starting to unpack some details. I gave you a very high level overview, about 10,000 feet above, looking down. Over the next couple of weeks, we'll dive in a lot deeper and see if there's any, if there's any merit to anything I suggested in this video. But until then, please like and subscribe to the channel. Post your comments, post your thoughts, post anything that you'd like to post. And until the next time, Pavarotti is out.